What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that appreciates all the birthday wishes, Zach, and today subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright, this story's called, I work here, but I don't work for the building. I just discovered this sub today, thanks to that Ask Reddit post about what subs are good to binge read. I've been looking for a place to tell this story for a long time, so without further ado, let's get to it. Background I used to work as an executive protection operator, or an EPO. The company I worked for, however, would routinely ask us if we wanted to do regular security gigs. As an EPO, my going rate was $25 to $30 an hour, since we were typically only working the odd day or night or weekend here and there. So when regular security jobs presented themselves, I usually declined since I wasn't about to make $13 an hour to stand around and do nothing all day. The only times I'd accept were for one store in Ottawa that was amazing to work for, since the employees were all amazing people and the company would put me in a super nice hotel. Or if it was holiday season and I wanted a little extra cash for gifts. The gig. It was Christmas 2013, the year we had that wicked polar vortex, and a stadium had just had its employees walk out on strike. The stadium has its own security for the stadium, but they think a little visible presence is required to make sure the strikers don't intimidate people coming to watch events or to ensure no vandalism occurs. So my company asks if I'm up for a week or two gig. Foolishly, I accept the job and am posted to the outside perimeter of the building. I cannot stress this enough, myself and the other contracted security were 100% separate from the stadium. We weren't even allowed inside except to use the washroom and that was a whole ordeal where we needed to have someone walk us to and from the washroom. Anyways, the event on this day was a basketball game between the Toronto Raptors and the, at the time, Charlotte Bobcats. I hate sports so I wasn't even aware that a basketball game was scheduled for that night. The event. I'm standing outside the venue in the polar vortex just about ready to either kill myself or walk out on the BS regular security job when this dude walks up to me. He isn't really looking at me, mostly playing on his phone, and as he approaches, he says, Let me in. I'm a bit of a butthole when I'm miserable, so I didn't even acknowledge his existence as he approached. Now I took a look at him. He was this pretty darn imposing black dude, and he was looking at me to let him in. From here on, we'll just call him Mother Father, because as you're about to see, this was a bit of a misunderstanding. Excuse me? Let me in. Alright, I have two thoughts. One, I have no idea who this guy is. Two, I'm not employed by the building as regular security. I can't let anyone in. I can't even get inside myself. Sorry, sir, I can't do that. Nah, no, man, I'm a bobcat, let me in. As I mentioned, I hate sports. I only learned the Bobcats were renamed to the Hornets writing this because I wanted to make sure my facts were straight. I'm also somewhat of a country kid. I hate cities with a passion. So when he tells me he's a Bobcat, my brain immediately jumps to the one thing I know about cities. Gangs. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I actually can't let you in. At this point, the dude finally puts his phone away and I got to enjoy his undivided attention. I'm a bobcat. He says it like I misheard him the first time. I don't care. Very nervous now, all that's running through my head is that we aren't armed. So if gang crap pops off, I'm screwed. Man, you're letting me in or else you're screwed. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'm in for a fight. So I try to add de-escalate. Sir, I understand your frustration, but threats won't get you anywhere. The doors don't open until whatever time they opened. If you have a ticket, I'm sure you'll have no problem getting in then. Man, go screw yourself. I'm a bobcat. I don't give a crap. Listen here, if you don't let me in, I'll have your job. You want to lose your job just before Christmas? I just laugh. This guy could be the CEO of the venue and I still wouldn't have lost my job since I don't work for them. Let me in, we're playing tonight! Huh? What was that? Playing? I'm a Bobcat! We're playing tonight against the Raptors! Oh. Oh. 
Oh! I start to laugh. Mother father is not amused. I told you I was a bobcat at the start. Dude, I hate sports and basketball is so far off my radar. The only teams I can name are the Toronto Raptors, the Harlem Globetrotters, the Monstars, and the Toon Squad. And I'm pretty sure the last two aren't real. He just huffs. Understandable. He worked his ass off to get here and I basically told him his success and career are so unimportant I couldn't even be bothered to know he was supposed to be there tonight. Whatever, let me in. I can't. What the hell, man? I'm playing tonight and you know I'm playing. Okay, A, I still don't know who you are, so this could easily be a ruse. And B, I'm sure one of the smarter people in the audience know where this is going. Sir, I literally can't let you in. See those strikers over there? I was contracted to keep an eye on them. I don't have access to the building. I couldn't get in right now even if I wanted to. So how the hell do I get in? I have no idea. How'd the rest of your team get in? The bus? Alright, well, if they're inside, maybe call or text one of them to come let you in? Whatever. He stormed off in a huff around the corner of the building, and I never saw him again. In his defense, I was standing outside one of the main doors in a security guard uniform. I definitely looked like I worked for the building and was technically being paid by them. But as I said in the beginning, I neither worked for the building, and I did not have access to the building. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed the read. That was actually a good story. Really unfortunate and funny could be mistaken as a case of racial profiling, to be honest. However, uh, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt here because, uh, I mean, obviously it doesn't seem like you, <laughs> that's what you were doing. I was just saying be careful, but that's neither here nor there. The story was good. Um, however, you probably should familiarize yourself with those you are protecting, maybe? However, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. It's not like you were expecting to run into a player. <laughs> Funny thing to think about is that you as a non-fan probably would have gone without that interaction, honestly. But if someone was like a Bobcats fan, they would have killed to be in that position there so that they can meet someone who they probably have a really high opinion of. This story's called, Actually, Ken, I don't work here anymore or for you. A friend of mine recently reminded me of this. The absolute best time I ever had dealing with a Karen in the wild. It happened about 30 years ago, so I'm going strictly by memory here. I also have no clue what the name for a male Karen is, so I'll call him Ken. Sorry this came out so long, but I think you'll enjoy it. I used to work for Chain Convenience Store, and back in the late 80s, it ran into financial trouble. Corporate decided that, to cut costs, they would sell off or shut down all locations that didn't have a gas station attached. This included my store. Once the stores were sold and closed, our positions would be eliminated and we'd be out of a job. Although I was only the assistant manager for our location, I was effectively running things as corporate had decided to pull my manager off to a different location, and the assistant would be good enough since the store was closing anyway. Now on to the story. Here's the cast. Head honcho guys from corporates in charge of selling the store, slightly involved near the end. Ken, entitled dude who bought our location. And of course, moi. Once Chain announced that they were closing the doors, it was no secret that we would be shutting down. Of course, us employees were still expected to give good customer service. That was usually no problem as we were in a good area and had pretty decent customers. They liked us. We liked them. But at the same time, we had no flips to give for the occasional Karens. It was nice being able to shut them down. What were they going to do? Fire us? Good times. I wish I could remember specific instances, but 30 years. They all kind of run together now. The most entitled of all, though, was Ken. Turns out he'd bought our location from Chain and would be taking over in about a month and a half. During that time, I was working with head honcho guys from corporate, doing things at the store level for the sale. Meanwhile, Ken came in a few times a week, demanding that certain things be done, as if he already owned the place. He wanted us to change displays, order specific products, etc. Head honcho guys had already told me to ignore his demands, so all of none of them were met with some variation of, No Ken, I work for Chain, not for you. 
and this isn't your store yet, which sent Ken off in all of his huffing glory, yelling that I wouldn't be acting like that once he ran the place. Fast forward to the final day. All the other employees had worked their last shifts, and as acting manager, I opened the store that morning. Head on Joe guys arrived to go through whatever they needed, and shortly before noon, Ken showed up. Ken and the head honcho guys went in the back and once they came back out, we closed the store in order to finalize everything. Head honcho guys and I cashed out the register for the last time and, most importantly, I turned over my key to the store. Once that was done, something close to the following happened. Okay Ken, we're done, it's all yours now. They started packing up to leave. Just making sure, uh, Chain no longer owns this location. Ken is in charge now, yes? Head honcho confirms, so I step out from behind the counter. Of course, Ken starts yelling. I think yelling was his default mode. Where do you think you're going? Home. What does it look like? You get back there and get your butt back behind that counter where it belongs. No, I don't think I work for you. What do you mean, no? I told you things would be different when I took over, and now you have to do what I tell you to do. With a huge grin on my face, I say, You just don't get it, do you? Ken looks confused. You bought the store. You bought the inventory. But you did not buy the employees, and you sure as hell didn't buy me. So I'll say it one last time and try to get this through to whatever functional cells may be floating around in your empty head. I don't work for you. Never have, never will. And since chain number one, two, three, four no longer exists, I don't work there anymore either. Since I'm no longer needed here, I nod to head honcho guys, I'm leaving. Ken starts sputtering and yelling incoherently, realizing he now has nobody to work the register as I walk to the doors for my last time. Of course, I can't help myself. As I'm pushing the door open, I turn around, give Ken my best customer service smile, and a cheery, have a nice day. If I recall correctly, the store didn't open again for a couple of days, at least, while Kevin tried to hire some employees. But anybody from the neighborhood who had seen him treating us so badly before the sale wanted nothing to do with him. And even once it reopened, it didn't last long. Serves you right, Ken. What are you, 10? Dumber than a hen? You're so dumb, lame, and smelly, you should be locked in a pen. Whew, I gotta tone it down on the freestyling. I didn't mean to destroy this entire man's existence. Like, eek, too savage to handle, right? Right? This story's called, Got Kicked Out of Walmart for Defending a Cashier. Not too sure if this belongs here, but hopefully you enjoy. Also has a bit of a wholesome ending, so please enjoy. If this is lucky enough to be picked up by any YouTubers, please feel free to use it. Appreciated. The year was 2014 in Calgary, Alberta at the beginning of November. The first major snowstorm had blown in and deposited a good amount of snow. Our company truck had blown a tire and for insurance purposes, the bunch of rednecks in the truck, myself included, were not allowed to change it. So we took it to our wonderful Wally World to get the tire changed. We waited patiently in the waiting area so we could go to work. During this time, an irate customer, who shall be henceforth known as irate customer, was tearing into the poor associate, known as poor associate, working behind the counter. Side note, I had done this exact job when I was in university, so this didn't help. The conversation goes as follows. What do you mean you don't have my tires? I'm sorry, sir. We don't have any more in stock. The bays are filled and our stock is gone. This is bull crap. I want those tires. How could you sell all of them? I'm sorry, sir, but we can't sell you something we don't have. We'll be restocked in a couple of days. Irate customer goes on an unholy rant on this poor associate for a good five minutes. During this time, I am just seething at how rude this guy is being and hoping he will calm down. Irate customer continues to look back at the others, looking for support, and then continues to berate this poor person. Now, I am a very soft-spoken individual. I do not start confrontation unless required. And at this point, I had had enough. I stood up and looked at the guy and said, 
Dude, it is the first snowstorm of the year in Canada. Why would you think there would be any tires left? let alone you being able to get in right away to get them put on. Irate customer shot daggers at me and said, Do you work here? Are you his manager? No? Then shut up, this doesn't concern you. My coworker, who was 115 pounds of East Coast fire, got right up into his face and says, How can you be such a butthole to someone just trying to do their job? Is your life so bad that you need to boss other people around to make you feel better about yourself? Now, I have never seen a mob mentality before, but it is amazing what happens when someone will call someone out on their BS and how quickly a crowd will jump to defend someone. They just need permission to act. Well, after the two to three minutes of screaming and shouting with this guy, the store manager was called to deal with the issue. The associate was questioned by the supervisor and other customers were filling them in on the details. I was within earshot of the store manager and irate customer and heard this little gem. All the people are hating me because I am not white. They are all a bunch of racists and liars. Don't you dare play the race card with me. If I look through the security tapes, will I see a bunch of people ganging up on you because of your skin color? After all this was said and done, the man was removed from the store. The store manager came up to my coworkers and I and said, I appreciate that you guys stuck up for my associates, but because you instigated and elevated the issue, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. But I have a colleague down the street who operates a body shop. Take your truck there and he can get you in and out in 30 minutes. So that is the tale on the best way and reason I have ever been kicked out of a store. It also helps to show that if you see someone being rude to an employee, stand up for those people. They make minimum wage and should not have to suffer buttholes who need a power trip. Thanks all and hope you enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the story. Did you guys enjoy the story? Let me know in the comments below. However, it could have used a little splash of vehicular manslaughter, but that's just my opinion. Doesn't need to be taken seriously, but that's just the way I like to, to roll. On a real note, good on you for sticking up for the employee. Everyone needs to do that when someone's being crazy because while employees might not be allowed to yell at customers, other customers are allowed to yell at customers. So yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.